Today we're going to explore triangles with integer sides and then as many integer angles as possible. And you might say, well, why don't we look for triangles with integer sides and integer angles in degrees, of course. Well, we'll see that as we explore this kind of broader question as having as many integer angles as possible. Okay, so let's say we have the following triangle. And I'm going to say that it has side lengths A, B, and C. And then furthermore, I'm going to say that this angle right here is theta. And now let's recall that the law of cosines will relate uh, A, B, C, and theta via the following equation. So we'll have A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2 times B times C times cosine theta. So we've got something like that. But now let's quickly observe that if theta is 90 degrees, then cosine of theta is zero, and we've got a right triangle. That's going to lead us to a Pythagorean triple. And, well, I think we've made some videos on the channel before where we classify Pythagorean triples by looking at, well, essentially a parameterization for them. So, in fact, we're going to explore other cases here today, but before we do that, let's note the following. So, if A, B, and C are integers, then that means that the cosine of theta is, in fact, a rational number. But in a previous video, we showed that the only rational values of cosine are 0, plus minus half and plus minus one. And those correspond to the well-known maybe angles that produce those values. And the appropriate angles that you could put inside of a triangle are the following. So here we could have theta equals 60 degrees. We could have theta equals 90 degrees which, like I said before, was a Pythagorean triple or led to a Pythagorean triple because we have a right triangle. Or we could have theta equals 120 degrees. So just to reiterate what we've shown, we've shown that if we have a triangle with side lengths A, B, and C where those are all integers, then we have to have at least one of the angles equal to 60, 90, or 120. So, well, what does that mean? Well, that means if we try to have more than one angle that is of integer size in degrees, well, then they all have to be 60 degrees. That's the only way that we could like fit them all inside of the triangle. So let's maybe make that remark right now. And that is that triangles with integer sides and integer angles in degrees are equilateral. So that means really the interesting case that we're looking at here, or all that we're left with is to look for triangles where one of the angles is an integer number of degrees. Again, just to reiterate, if we have two integer angle degrees, then we automatically have three integer angle degrees, and that's 360 degrees, which is equilateral. So that means, like I said, we're interested in triangles with one angle equal to 60 degrees, 90 degrees, or 120 degrees. Now, as we said before, this 90 degrees is going to give us a right triangle, which is going to, in the end, give us Pythagorean triples, or I guess I should say the triple ABC represents a Pythagorean triple, which has a well-known parameterization. The case when we have 120 degrees, well, that's also another interesting case. But what we'll do today is the case when we have 60 degrees. And perhaps this case with 120 degrees we'll do in a later video. Okay, so let's start to explore this case when we have 60 degrees. And whenever we have 60 degrees, well, cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half. So putting that into our formula, what we have here is 
a squared equals b squared plus c squared, and then minus b times c. So something like that. And now what we'd like to do is do some algebraic manipulation on this equation so that we can start maybe doing kind of like a factorization. So let's see. If we move the b squared and the c squared to the other side of the equation, then we'll be left with a negative bc on the right. But what I want to do is add a 2bc to that negative bc, turning it into a b times c. So then we're left with the following equation. And this may seem like, well, why are we looking at this equation? Well, in fact, it's because we can factor this in kind of an interesting way. This left-hand side factors as a minus b plus c times a plus b minus c. And then over here, we have b times c. And now, next up, let's suppose that this left-hand side, as well as the right-hand side of this equation, kind of obviously, is equal to the product of four numbers, where we pick these numbers to be one if necessary. This is just a way to start splitting this thing up and, well, essentially getting somewhat like a parameterization for A, B, and C. So let's say this whole thing is the product of P times Q times R times S, where, again, if really we just have a product of two primes over here, then that means that two of those numbers are chose to be one as needed. And then let's also suppose that those four numbers, P, Q, R, and S, split up in B and C as follows. So let's suppose that B is equal to P times Q, meaning C is equal to R times S. And then let's also suppose that the left-hand side splits up kind of similarly. So maybe a plus b minus c is equal to q times s, and then a minus b plus c is equal to p times r. Okay, so let's see what we can get out of that. Okay, so as we move forward, I'd like to point out that this technique for splitting this product up I found in a paper by John Gilder from the Math Gazette. Okay, so let's continue along this path to see what we can get. So let's perhaps start with these two equations over here for a plus b minus c and a minus b plus c and eliminate a. So, well, we can do that by taking perhaps the first equation and subtracting the second equation, or vice versa. Let's maybe take the second equation and subtract the first equation. So that's going to give us something like this. So we'll have a minus b plus c minus a plus b minus c equals pr minus qs. But now canceling over here on the left-hand side, well, it's something like this. So we have 2 times C minus 2 times B equals PR minus Q times S. But then plugging in for C and B from these substitutions up here, we'll have what? Well, let's see. We'll have 2 times RS, because that's C, minus 2 times PQ, because that's B, is equal to PR minus Q times S. So something like that. But now we can start moving some things around. Notice that we immediately have 2RS plus QS is equal to, let's see, that's going to be 2PQ plus PR. Then we can do some cancellation or some factorization, I should say, pull an S out of this left hand side. We have 2R plus Q equals P times 2Q plus R. So there's this nice shape here. We've got a number, 2R plus Q, and then a number, 2Q plus R. So the roles of R and Q are getting switched from the left-hand side of the equation to the right-hand side of the equation. 
But let's also notice that we could take this equation right here and view it two different ways. Notice we could divide by 2r plus q, and we have s is equal to, well, it's gonna be p over 2r plus q times 2q plus r. But we can combine some of that stuff into simply a rational number, and what we'll see is that s is equal to, I'll call it capital A, times R plus 2Q, or 2Q plus R, where A is a rational number created by doing that quotient. Next up, we can view that from the right-hand side to the left-hand side to get a similar like expression for P, and observe that we have P here is equal to B times, let's see, it'll be 2R, um, plus Q, where again, B is gonna be a rational number due to that construction as well. But now what I'd like to do is plug those values of S and P back into our original equation. This being our original equation. So now the left-hand side becomes A times 2Q plus R times 2R plus Q and then the right-hand side becomes b times 2r plus q times 2q plus r, meaning that we have a is equal to b. So in the end, we've got an expression for s and p in terms of this new rational number and q and r. So in fact, we have s is equal to this rational number a times, let's see, 2q plus r like we had before, and then p is this rational number a times uh, q plus 2r. Okay, so now let's take that information and see where that brings us. Okay, so, so far in our construction, we were able to write p as a rational multiple of q plus 2r and s as a rational number of 2q plus r. But let's see, that's actually gonna help us uh, simplify B and C. So observe that B is now equal to what? So it's gonna be A times Q times Q plus two R. And then C is now A times, let's see, it'll be R times two Q plus R. So we're able to write B and C simply in terms of Q and R and, well, this number A, which we're gonna actually get rid of in just a second, but we'll see how. But then also our lowercase a, which is the remaining side of our triangle over here, can be rewritten in the following way. So notice that's B minus C plus P times R from our equation up here. Okay, but now, well, what is that? So let's notice that B and C, well, and P, all have a multiple of A out front. So we can pull that out of the whole thing, and then we'll have a Q squared plus a 2QR, that's from our B term, and then minus a 2QR minus an R squared, that's from our C term, and then plus p times r. But notice that's going to be a plus uh, qr uh, plus 2 times r squared, just multiplying r through that p term there. But notice that we get some simplification, and that simplification is, well, now we're going to have q squared and then plus Q times R after some cancellation plus R squared. So we have something like that. So let's notice that B and C are both rational multiples of that thing involving Q and R. And then A is the same rational multiple of, well, another expression involving Q and R. So kind of putting all this together, what we see is that our original a triangle, which is our triangle with side lengths A, B, and C, is similar, so I'll just put like a little twiddle there to mean similar, to maybe a new triangle with side lengths that, well, have exactly what we have here, but without the capital A. 
because of the definition of similar triangles, so that would be the triangle with Q squared plus QR plus R squared for the first entry. And then for the second entry, we'll have, let's see, Q squared plus 2QR. And for the third entry, we'll have 2QR plus R squared. So in other words, we have a parameterization, a two-variable a two variable parameterization to create these types of triangles. So, in other words, let's see, we've got this family of maybe primitive 60 degree triangles. So let's see, let's say we take Q and R to be relatively prime, then we have a 60 degree integer triangle with these lengths up here. So I'll just copy that down. So Q squared plus QR plus R squared, and then Q squared plus 2QR, and then 2QR plus R squared. So if you think about the parameterization of Pythagorean triples, this is fairly similar to that. That being said, we have not shown that all 60 degree triangles are parameterized by this method. And in fact, that's not true. The parameterization for all is a little bit more complicated and maybe not as satisfying as it is for Pythagorean triples, but at least we get some here. And well, perhaps while we're at it, let's look at maybe a really nice example. So let's see, if we were to pick Q is equal to two, and then r is equal to three, what would we have here? So that would be the triangle here. We'll have four plus six, that's 10 plus nine. So that would be 19 on this side. And then we'll have, let's see, q squared is four, and then two times six is 12. So that would be 16 on this side. And then let's see, we've got two q, that should be a two q r. So that's another 12 plus nine in this case. So that'll be 21 on this side. So we've got a triangle with side lengths, 19, 16, and 21, where 19 is the side length across from our angle, which is 60 degrees. Okay, so like I said before, perhaps in a future video, we'll explore the same kind of idea with 120 degree triangles. And that's a good place to stop.